Hi dear students, good morning and welcome back to our Biosology class. We are very happy to inform that you are very cooperative with us and you are following us. Hope you are covering the portions also and kindly follow the same for the forthcoming classes too. Good? Okay. So before we move to the today's topic, let us do one review regarding this previous class. So in the previous class we have discussed regarding the three objectives that is three domains of life, five kingdom classification and taxonomic hierarchy. So the first one three domains of life as per this the entire organisms of the air has classified as three domains that is archaea, bacteria and eukarya right. So archaea in the sense extreme of files the bacteria which live in extreme climatic conditions. Second one is bacteria and the bacteria in the sense cyanobacteria as well as this bacteria belongs to this bacteria group. And the third one is eukarya which includes protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. Is it clear? And the second one we have seen it is a five kingdom classification system. And as per this system the entire organisms are classified as five kingdoms. So do you remember monera, protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. Is it fine? And the third one we have discussed it is taxonomic hierarchy. So taxonomic hierarchy means one classification system or classification order is given for each species to identify each organisms or each species is called taxonomic hierarchy. For example, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. As per this level, the hierarchic order will be there. Is it fine? Shall we move to the next class? So, we, just we can see today's class. Fine. So, today's class we are going to discuss regarding the three matters that is nomenclature, concept of species and tools of taxonomy. Nomenclature, concept of species and tools of taxonomy. So, let us see one by one what is there. Fine. Okay, so below this nomenclature title, I have displayed few figures here, right? Few pictures. Can you name them? Yeah, of course. Peacock, cherry blossom, deer, goldfish, butterfly, tulip flower, right? So, now we have called these organisms with one name. So, we have identified peacock with its name as peacock, right? And we have differentiated peacock from the goldfish with its name, right? So, we have given one particular name for these organisms. That is called nomenclature. Nomenclature is a Latin term actually. It denotes naming, naming. It denotes naming, right? So now we have given the names for these organisms. Now let us see this definition for nomenclature. Fine. So nomenclature definition is the process of assigning scientific names for animals or taxonomic group is called nomenclature. So they say Nomenclature is one of the process for assigning scientific names. So we are assigning or we are giving scientific name for one animal or one taxonomic group is called nomenclature they said. So why should already be given the name right? So in the previous slide we have given, we have given certain names for the particular organisms. Then why should they have, they have highlighted here the word as a scientific names? So, what is the use of this one? What is the need of this one? So, why should we have given one scientific name? Some reason will be there behind this. Am I right? Okay. So, let us see what is this reason behind this. So, nomenclature definition is the process of assigning scientific name for animals or taxonomic group is called nomenclature. So, let us see what is there behind this scientific name and why should we have to give the scientific name? What are the rules we have to follow the scientific name and how can we assign the scientific name? That details we are going to follow. Clear? 
first one types of nomenclature what are the types of nomenclature is there the first one vernacular nomenclature second one binomial nomenclature and the third one is trinomial nomenclature so vernacular nomenclature binomial nomenclature as well as trinomial nomenclature and let us see in detail what is this each variety is fine so the first one is vernacular nomenclature which means the naming of these organisms with the regional language or local language is called vernacular nomenclature right so here i have displayed one animal right and nearby that i have given this name of this animal with the five languages the first one the animal is called as yanai in tamil then in english it is called as elephant malayalam it is called as aanai then hindi it is called as hathi the same telugu it is called as enugu do you notice one thing the animal is same but we have given five names for the same animal the organism is same but we are calling the same organism with a different names and do you know one thing the report says there is more than 6000 different languages are there throughout the world if you take india 22 official languages are there and and again the report says more than thousands of local languages are there right in the sense the same organisms may get more than 6000 names understand so to avoid this confusion scientists has plan to give one particular name or common name for one particular species and it should be followed throughout this world is it clear so that's why they started to assign the scientific names so the scientific name is common throughout this world so every people can understand the same animal with this name is it clear and this naming will be given as per the guidelines of the organization that is icizn that means international code for zoological nomenclature as per the guidance from this organization the naming of this organisms will be done is it clear so vernacular nomenclature means assigning this names for with local language so there is lot of drawback we can found and that's why they are assigning the scientific names so how let us see how can we give a scientific name for this organisms is it clear first method is binomial nomenclature so with this term even you can understand by in the sense two and nomen means name so nomenclature already we said naming of this organisms so binomial nomenclature means as per this method each and every organisms or species must to have two names right so one name is a genus name and the second name is a species name so genus name must to begin with a capital letter and the species name should be with a small letter so hope you these details you know already right and this method is introduced by the person carolus lenaeus even we are following the same method even now also right so here two example i have given our national bird peacock its scientific name is pavo cristatus so two names are there is it clear and our national animal tiger its scientific name is panthera tigeris so two names are there understand okay next one trinomial nomenclature so trinomial nomenclature means the same organism or particular species will be called with three names so tri means three and nomen means name right and this method is introduced by the person huxley and stickland clear so here the same method only followed genus name and the species name only will be given for example this is the uh, the figure he, i displayed here this is house crow its scientific name is corvus splendens splendens so as per the rule we have to give only generic name and the species name here also the same corvus is a generic name and the splendens is a species name so splendon in the sense this particular species may comes under the particular organisms may come under the same species splendens 
but among them even little minute differences will be there uh, that's why they have made it under a subspecies subspecies so that's why subspecies name also will be included so here the subspecies also splendens that's why it is getting the name corvus splendens splendens which means first name is corvus is genus splendens is species and splendens is again subspecies so the say, organism is getting three names is it clear that method is called trinomial nomenclature fine And here they are introducing another one new term. It is called tautonymy. Tautonymy. Which means the practice of naming the animal in which generic name and the species name are the same is called tautonymy. Do you get me? One example I have given here. This is the scientific name. Naja Naja is the scientific name for cobra. Indian cobra. Here the first name Naja is a species, genus name. And the second name Naja is a species name. Here, genus name as well as species name both is same. Such a variety is called tautonomy. This kind of naming is called tautonomy. Is it clear? So it's one of the three mark question. So the practice of naming the animal in which generic name and the species name are the same is called tautonomy. Is it clear? So three method of naming we said. Vernacular nomenclature, binomial nomenclature, as well as trinomial nomenclature, and this also one of this term it is in, included under this naming method. Is it clear? And we can go to the next topic. Rules of nomenclature. Rules of nomenclature means when we assign the scientific name for one particular species, certain rules we must to follow. So which is actually it is given by IC is written as we said already international code of zoological nomenclature as per their guidelines only we can assign the name for these organisms is it clear let us see few uh, uh, you know rules uh, given by these persons these organizations right let us see the first one the first rule actually the scientific name should be italicized here one example I have given Homo sapiens. It's a scientific name for human, right? Do you notice this one? When we give this scientific name as the printed form, so in the system now, in the computer now, we are giving as a printed form, right? When we write this scientific name as a printed form, the font should be italicized font. You know, their italicized font will be there. So the italicized font only we have to write, we have to follow. That is the first rule. The scientific name, if it is in the printed form, it should be as a italicized font. Have you got me? Okay. Second rule, if it is handwritten, if we if we are writing this name with our own hand, if it is handwritten, and genus name and the species name should be underlined separately. That I have given the example there. Homo separately we have to underline. Sapiens separately we have to understand. Underline. Sorry. Next one, and as we said already, as per the binomial nomenclature, the genus name and species name should be there. So organisms must to give either two or three names. So it should be as genus name as well as the species name. Genus name must to begin with a capital letter, and the species name must to begin with a small letter. Is it clear? And next rule is the scientific name of any two organisms are not similar. So each and every species has a unique name. It is separate name. It is not there for any other organisms in this world. So that's why they said scientific names are not similar. Each and every species will be denoted as different names. Have you got me? Okay. And the next one. When one scientist is giving the name, publishing the name for one organisms, his name also will be included along with the after the species name right for example lion lion scientific name is felis leo but this name is first published by the person carolus linnaeus so after this species name we cannot give the full name as carolus linnaeus along with the year right that's why in the shorted form they are writing 
ஃபெலிஸ் லியோ எல்ஐ என்என் ஃபுல் ஸ்டாப் கமா ஆஸ் ஃபாலோட் பை த இயர் செவன்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டி எயிட் டி கெட் மீ ஆக்சுவலி திஸ் நேம் ஃபார் திஸ் லயன் இஸ் ஃபஸ்ட் பப்ளிஷ்ட் பை கரலஸ் லெனேயர்ஸ் தட்ஸ் வை ஹிஸ் நேம் இஸ் இன்க்ளூடட் ஆஃப்டர் த ஸ்பீஸ் இஸ் நேம் பட் இன் எ ஷார்ட் ஃபார்ம் ஹாவ் யூ காட் மீ எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஃபெலிஸ் லியோ எல்ஐ என்என் then one full stop then comma then the year of publication that is 1758 or again with a short form instead of l i n n we can write l alone say so felis leo capital l full stop comma then the publication year it is 1758 that also one of the rule right and the another one is if the scientist who published the name at first can give their name as the species name in place of the species name for example cetodactylus is a scientific name for the ground dwelling lizard it is a newly found ground dwelling lizard its scientific name is cetodactylus this is found by the person varadgiri varadgiri has found this one that's why the name of this organism scientific name of this organism is cetodactylus varadgiri but one Um, rule has included along with this if the scientific name is included at the end either we have to add one i or double i or ae do you get me cetodactylus varadgiri we can write but at the end we have to include either one single i or double i or a and e understand okay so these are the few rules we have explained now to give we have to follow when we are giving the scientific name for these organisms do you get me few rules this is one of the very very important questions we have to learn clear shall we go to the next topic the next topic is concept of species so in the last class also we have said regarding the species species is a group of organism morphologically similar and it will do the reproduction among themselves it will do the interbreeding among themselves it will produce the fertile offspring these are the characters we have learned regarding the species in the last class even right do you remember okay and here this topic in says few scientists has given their own definition for species okay shall we discuss the first one is given by the person john ray in his book it is histora generalis plantarum which was published in the year 1693 right okay let us see what he has said for about species he is telling species is a group of morphologically similar organisms organisms arising from a same ancestor or common ancestor so one species means we can say for example human beings are one species so morphologically we are similar and arising from the common ancestor human beings are arising from this of course human being scientific name homo sapiens we said homo sapiens are arising from and homo erectus erectus is arising from homo habilis right the ancestor is same so that is his concept he was telling species is a group of morphologically similar organisms arising from a common ancestor do you get me okay next next term is given by the person carolus linnaeus in his book it is systema naturae he has defined the species as species as a basic unit of classification of course he is the father of taxonomy already we knows that's why so the taxonomy as per the taxonomic level he has given the definition also so when we frame this classification as per the species level only the classification will be made right so when we give this species name only we can exactly found one species right that's why he is telling species as a basic unit of classification is given by carolus linnaeus is it clear okay the next the next person is charles darwin and he has published the book called origin of species in the year 1859 and he is one of this familiar evolutionist that's why he is connecting this species word with the evolution okay and that's why he was telling evolutionary connection of species by the process of natural selection 
he is connecting the species with the evolution with the help of this i mean hierarchic tree or evolutionary tree we can say right evolutionary tree so where from this is evolved one particular species is evolved from uh, from which species so as he is connecting this species with the evolutionary path that's why he is giving evolutionary connection of species by the process of natural selection is it fine okay the next one okay so till now we have completed two topics the first one is nomenclature so uh, uh, in nomenclature we say did this naming of these organisms vernacular naming binomial naming as well as this trinomial nomenclature then we said this rules of nomenclature right and the next topic we said concept of species various concept or both the species said by various scientists okay shall we move to the next topic that is tools for study of taxonomy taxonomy in the sense this study of this or classification of this organisms right is called taxonomy so what are the things is helping for this taxonomic study what are the things is there to help this taxonomical study that is called tools for study of taxonomy shall we go into the topic the first one the classical taxonomical tools and molecular taxonomical tools third one automated species identification tools and the fourth one neo taxonomical tools next one ethology of taxonomical tools and the last one e taxonomical resources right these are all going to help for this taxonomy class with organisms or to study about this organisms or species shall we look into one by one one is classical taxonomic tools so listen me taxonomical keys museum zoological parks marine parks and printed taxonomical tools these are all belongs to classical taxonomical tools classical in the sense we can see we are following from this ancestral period onwards that we can just we can say right classical taxonomical tools so taxonomical keys museum zoological park marine park and printed taxonomical tools uh, belongs to taxonomy classical taxonomical tools let us see one by one what is taxonomical keys and and so on right okay one is taxonomical keys you know when we study about one particular organism when we study about one particular organisms the scientist has given some comments or details about the character of this organisms in the form of keys in the form of keys so if he wants to know about one particular organisms or if he wants to study about one particular organisms if you go through these keys you can understand about the behavior and character of this particular organism understand one example i can say here so this uh, what i displayed is one of the method of this taxonomical key for example here by this method the character of this organism is explained with sr no type questions just one example i could say for example we want to know this and uh, name of this animal as last one gorilla just we can imagine gorilla we do not know this animal name we want to know about this animal right in such a case of course we will go to the cardata area and we are giving this they will ask the question we are going to answer as yes or no type is it clear okay so we want to know the name for this gorilla now is it clear so they ask the question we have to answer as per this character of this animal right for example the first question they are asking the animal which you wants to know whether it has dry skin is the question so if the question is yes of course gorilla has dry skin so you are telling yes the the answer is yes or if the answer is no they may say it is a salamander or if the answer is yes then you will pass to the next question and the next question whether this organism has hair so you are telling of course the gorilla has a hair so you will answer the question yes understand if you answer no it may be the lizard right 
but you are answering as yes and then you are moving to the third question they are asking the next question whether it has opposable thumb opposable thumb means the both the thumb should be in the straight that is called it is opposable thumb so you know tiger there is no opposable thumb is there that's why it, if it is no it may be the tiger ah uh, but you are telling it is yes uh, yes because it has opposable thumb and um, which means they are asking the next question whether it is bipedal bipedal means two whether two legs are there for movement so gorilla has four legs so you are telling the answer is no so your answer may be gorilla but if it is yes your answer may be human being do you get me this is the keys so if you wants to study about one known organism or unknown organism for example you have one organism whether you do not know whether they, this is identified already or the name is given already these things you do not know understand you wants to know so they will ask the questions whether it is has this character you will give whether is or no and they will go for the next question whether you have this character for this organisms as per that they will ask the question as is yes or no type and you will answer as per the character of this animal which you have already then you could identify the particular animal this is one of the method for taxonomical keys is it clear so this is helping for this taxonomy taxonomical study okay shall we go to the next of course museum what we can say museum museum here is a collection of preserved plants and animals museum consists of the collection of preserved plants and animals even extinct animals and the surviving animals both will be there in the museum right you may visit the so many museums i hope so there extinct animals also will be there and this living animals also will be there in a preserved condition so what is the use of this museum how it will helpful for the taxonomical study you know if we wants to study about the character of one particular animal if we go to the museum we can closely watch this animal you can closely observe the character of this animal morphology of this animal everything for example if you want to know about the one particular snake you may not go near with that when, even when it is in a, a natural environmental conditions but if it is inside the specimen in a preserved condition you can go very closely with that and you can watch it am i right so these also helping for this taxonomical study is it clear and the next one is zoological park zoological park is differ from the zoo right zoological park in the sense the animals are left free in a free environmental condition but with the care of this human it's not the forest here we can say wild animals are kept free in a protected environmental conditions with the care of this human so in such a cases in its own environment how it is how it is behaving Uh, how, how its food pattern is there so these are all the character naturally we can able to gain understand if it is left free in this free environmental conditions behavior of this animal food uh, food habit of this animals all those things many characters we can able to gain right so this also helping for the taxonomical studies yeah of course like zoological park here it is a marine park in the zoological park wild animals are protected in environmental condition but here aquatic organisms are protected very well in a controlled condition with the care of this human it is called marine park so here also we can observe these animals and its behavior and its movement its reproduction pattern everything we can able to observe and this also helping for this taxonomical studies the last one is printed taxonomical tools so printed taxonomical tools means other than this taxonomical keys or museum or zoological park or marine park these are all helping to identify one particular organism so to know about this particular organisms the same other than these things the the entire description regarding one particular species or organisms will be written in a textbooks or books so which is written by so many others right so in their details or description we can able to collect when we go to the library we can collect a lot of books and from there we can collect this details that is called printed taxonomical tools is it clear so this is the first tool we have discussed now classical taxonomical tools so classical taxonomical tools includes 
taxonomical keys, museum, zoological park, marine park as well as printed taxonomical tools. Is it clear? Okay, shall we move to the next? Next one is molecular taxonomical tools. So molecules is maybe the new term. You, you may not be learned in the lower classes. So I'm moreover it is one of the new techniques, current technique also we can say molecular taxonomical tools. So the previous topic we said museum, zoological park, marine parks, so and uh, books. These are all helping to identify the organisms as well as to know about the character of these organisms. But in the molecular taxonomical tool, the researchers are going in a minute level, even in a molecule level. So exactly we can say DNA level, even in atoms level, the studies are going on. That is called molecular taxonomical tools. Basically, the, here they are giving the importance to DNAs. Right? So do you know the structure of this DNA? Now, generally, we can say DNA consists of double helix and um, bases will be there and so on. Right? So here, these are uh, the whatever I have noticed here is, is recent technologies, current technologies, right? So I will give one outline regarding these things to make you to understand, right? So as per that, the first one is DNA barcoding, second one DNA hybridization, DNA fingerprinting, and RFLP means restriction fragment length polymorphism. The next one PCR polymerized chain reaction. These are some process or procedure or technologies is helping to identify one particular species. Have you got me? These are the techniques. It's a recent and current technologies. Okay. Just we can give an outlook regarding each varieties. Do you get me? Among these, the first one is DNA barcoding. Have you seen the barcoding? Yeah, of course. When we go to this uh, supermarket, we will purchase these things. And wherever, if you mostly in most of these products, a barcode is given, right? What is the use of this barcode? So the product may consist of one barcode. It may have two different um, color lines, parallel lines, and right, dark line as well as the light light line will be there. And the staff may scan this with this barcode scanner. So when they scan with these codes, these codes may consist of this particular numbers will be there. So when they scan, the entire details about, about this product will be uh, collected by this persons in the system, in the computer, right? That is the use of this barcode. For example, each and every line has one information. Each and every line has one information. For example, manufacturer, product code cost, worth, etc, etc. Right. So, each and every line has one information. It will be given as a, as a bar or as a number. So, that is the barcoding system. So, with this uh, code or this uh, width of this code, this information will be collected about one product. The same method here, they are applying for the DNA also. Right. So, organisms or species may consist of the DNA. This DNA's character is explained as a code as a code this code is called barcode so when we scan this code barcode of course about this dna of one particular species will be land understand when they when they uh, scan this code this code consists of all the information regarding this dna which is taken from one particular species either this or any one species so that is called barcoding system. Do you get me? Okay. Next one. Hybridization. This is also one of the procedure or one of the technology. Hybridization technology means, you know, combination of two variety is called hybrid. Variety 1 is there. A DNA is there. B DNA is there. And it is it has a double helix. So first procedure, it will rewind. So it will separate. Each strands will separate. And A strand will combine with the B strand. That's why they denoted as various colors. Can you see? And B strand will combine with the A strand. So a new variety will be produced. That is called DNA hybridization method. So this method also helping for this DNA studies. And DNA studies is helping to know about for the particular species. Do you get me? One is DNA fingerprinting. So fingerprinting, you may know about the fingerprinting. 
thumb thumb print we knows right so we knows thumb print is one of the unique one for each and every individual in this entire universe entire world right thumb print is very unique the same dna also very unique so the dna of one person will not be similar for the next one right so that's so like a thumb print the dna printing also one of the unique one for each and every individual other than this identical twins but the identical twins thumb print will be different do you get me so that is called it's a dna finger printing so dna finger printing means actually if he is, wants to know about this one a lot of information is there behind this one for example the dna consists of bases for example adenine guanine thymine cytosine this bases will be there this bases will be repeated throughout the length of this dna right but this bases this repetition of this bases will not be similar for individual to individual do you get me adenine guanine thymine cytosine this four will be repeated throughout the length of this dna but it is not similar for individual to individual for each and every individual this repetition will be different that is called finger printing dna finger printing so this also helping exactly helping to identify one particular species without any doubt at all have you got me okay the next one or of lp restriction fragment length polymorphism this is also one of this vast procedure but let me give you some inter, some guidelines about this one restriction fragment length polymorphism in the sense so the dna will be collected the dna extract will be collected from one species then it is allowed for fragment which means some restriction endonuclease enzymes will be some enzymes will be allowed in this sample so the length of this dna will be fragmented the entire dna will be fragmented as as a pieces have you got me with the help of this enzyme the dna will be splitted or cutted okay with a different length then this will be applied to the next one it is a centrifugation method so as per the length of this dna fragment the sedimentation will be there it will settle inside this centrifugation tube so as per this length of this fragment or as per the sedimentation of this fragment the uh, character of this segment will be studied that's what we can say simply about this restriction fragment length polymorphism so this also helping for this learning about one particular species okay next one pcr technology polymerase chain reaction is also one of the recent technologies polymerase chain reaction means the dna will be uh, uh, you know multiplied with various numbers a lot of numbers same dna multiplication will be produced for example as we said already dna consists of two strands so these two strands will separate first then each strand will produce the matching match ching of another one strand that is also called as a template strand that you will come learn in this Uh, next classes right so one two strands will separate each other then each strand will produce its own matching strand so again one one dna will produce two dna then that dna will separate again then again it will produce its matching strand so likewise the process will be repeated again and again so lot of dna copies will be produced from the same one particular dna copy so this technology they are applying to learn about this particular species okay so these are all these techniques they are applying to study about this taxonomy that is called molecular taxonomical tools have you got me shall we go to the next now next one is automated species identification tools of course this is one we can say it is a cyber tools means through internet we can collect this details about one particular organisms so various websites will be given so if you go through these websites we can collect the details or description regarding one particular species that is called automated species identification tools so as per that few it is given here the first one is ALIS automated leaf copper identification system if you go through this website of course we can understand about one character of this leaf copper leaf copper is one of the insect which is living on this leaves of this plants right so if you go through this website we can understand this character of this leaf coppers okay and the next one daisv digital automated identification system of course this is also internet form right we can collect the details from the net that's what they said is a digital next one is abyss 
automated bee identification system. So regarding the bees, we can collect the details from this website. And next one is SPIDA. Species identified automatically. So ex especially spider, wasp and bee character will be analyzed with the help of this data. Right? And the next one is drawings. So if, with this data, we can uh, collect the details regarding this bee wings. The wings of these bees will be identified. Right? So these are all the databases we can collect from this through the internet is called it is automated species identification tools. Shall we go to the next? The next one is new taxonomical tools. Here some microscopes they are using. So I hope you may know about the various microscopes, the dissection microscope, compound microscope, scanning electron microscope, electron microscope. So various microscopes are there. So here I have displayed electron microscope. So even a single cell also will be sliced into various pieces and each minute details about one single cell even we can understand with the help of this electron microscope. So this electron microscope also helping a lot to know about this each and every organisms. Once ethology of taxonomical tools. Ethology of means as per the behavior of these organisms, we can give the classification. That is called ethology of taxonomical tools. For example, as per the sound of this bird also, we can classify these birds. And another one example, as per the bioluminescence. As bioluminescence in the sense, uh, this uh, organisms will observe this light and it will emit it. That is called it is bioluminescence. Based on these character also, the organisms will be classified. That is called ethology. Right? And of course, e-taxonomical resources means, of course, it is from the databases we can collect from the internet or computer. That is one, one of this method, they said is a I -N -O -T -A -X -A. That means integrated open taxonomical access, which is found in London, actually. Then, so a lot of information or data we could able to collect from this, uh, you know, resource. One of this example, I -N -O -T -A -X -A. Is it clear? Hope you have understood and just we can go for some assignments. Fine. I give you questions here, dear students. The first question is define nomenclature. Second question define taxonomy, And third question define species. So species even with, and three definitions we said. So these are all will comes under this either two mark question or three mark question and i will give few five mark question also but it is a very simple question but important questions for example one thing explain rules of nomenclature it is very simple explain classical taxonomical tools also simple how molecular taxonomical tools helps in taxonomical study and last one explain automated species identification tools so last four may comes as a five mark questions right so and dear students that you and look into the book and read line by line and these are the highlighted few questions you can cover up for time being and rest of the things we can revise after the day open and hope you will do well until then we can meet in the next class until then bye thank you